Hey guys! In this video, we'll be using Electron, React, and Tailwind to create an awesome timer overlay app. This video would be perfect for you if you want to learn Electron to create beautiful cross-platform applications. We'll be doing everything together step by step. We'll start out by creating an empty directory and we'll end up with a distributable that you can install on your system or share with your friends to show them how cool you are. All right, so this is what we'll end up with at the end of the video. This timer app, as you can see, it always stays on top and the default timer is set to one, but you can set any default you want, of course. I'll show you how. For now, let's set the timer to, let's say, eight seconds. So I want to show you my favorite part about it. Let's start the timer. And now I'm going to type in a hot key. And check it out. It's overlay mode. And you can click right through it. And now listen. <laughs> that is so awesome. It sounds like a frog. But of course, you'll be able to choose any alarm sound you want. All right, let's begin by creating a new directory where our project will live. Let's call it timer app and let's open it in Visual Studio Code. And now let's open terminal. And before we start creating our application or coding anything, let's make sure we have node installed on our system. To do that, we can type node dash V, V stands for version, and then we can hit enter. So if you see a version number like this, that means you have node installed. However, if you see an error, that means that you don't have node installed and you should go to nodejs.org and download it. The other thing we're gonna need is NPM. You can also check if you have NPM on your system in the same way. NPM comes with Node, so if you have Node, you should have NPM, but it's always good to check because it can be deleted. All right, I think now we're ready to create our project scaffolding. For this project, we're gonna be using Electron Vite, and it's always good to check the docs, so I have the docs open now, and I will be copying this command in my terminal. Okay, I'll paste it and hit enter. And um, now it's asking me to name my project. I'll be naming it timer app because I feel like this makes sense. All right, and select the framework. Let's select React. And it's asking if we'll be adding TypeScript. For this project, no, we will not be adding TypeScript. And we don't want to add Electron Updater plugin. Thank you. We don't want to enable Electron Download Mirror Proxy either. All right, now let's follow these instructions. So CD timer app and then we want to npm install so i'll type npm i instead of install because it's faster and then i'm gonna hit enter and then we gotta wait a bit oh while we wait um i'd like to ask you if you're enjoying this content please hit the thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe thank you so much all right excellent so now our app is done installing and we have all these directories. For now, let's run our app by typing in npm run dev. All right, and here it is, yay. Okay, now the first thing I would like to do is I would like to keep my window on top at all times. To do this, let's go to where our main process is, which we're gonna find in the source directory. Remember, leave the out directory alone. Don't touch it. Leave the build directory alone for now. For now, stay in the source directory. All right, so we go to the source directory. We go main and we wanna open the index.js file and anywhere under the create window function, we wanna type in main window dot set always on top and we wanna set that to true screen. And just like that, when we restart our application, our app should stay always on top at all times, which is actually gonna be quite handy. Yep, it's working. It stays on top, woohoo. Okie dokie. Now, before we play around, I would also like to install Tailwind and add it as a dependency because I find that Tailwind can make styling apps so much faster and also so much more fun in my opinion. Okay, so 
let's go to the tailwind docs and I'm just going to copy these two commands in terminal hit enter just wait a bit all right super cool so now we have this file that was created for us at tailwind.config.js and we are gonna need to configure the path of our templates files here so I'm just gonna copy this line of code and I'm going to replace content here in my tailored.config.js file but if we leave it like this it's not gonna work because we're actually gonna be working with JSX files since we're using react right so let's add JSX here I think this should do it and then we need to add these lines to our CSS file so let's go to our source directory again and we're gonna find our CSS files in the assets directory I'm just gonna go to the main.css file and I'm going to replace all this code with these three lines um, and I don't think we need the base.css file anymore so I'm just gonna delete it okay and the last step that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to create a new file in our root directory and it will start with a dot or a period and it will be called post CSS RC and within it we're gonna create a JSON object with plugins and then let's add tailwind CSS all right and now I'm hoping that when we run our application again everything will work as expected and we'll be able to style our components with tailwinds okay so everything looks so messed up and weird because we've deleted the CSS code um so actually let's also delete all of this so to do this we're gonna go to render directory and we're gonna go to app.jsx and we're going to delete all the code between the react fragments Ta-da! it's empty now so let's add a hello world all right and now let's check if tailwind is working by styling our hello world by adding a class name like for example let's make the text bigger Yay, it worked. All right, so since our application is gonna be an overlay app, we would like to be able to play with every part of it. The first thing we wanna do is just hide this bar or remove it. So let's go to our source directory and find the main directory. And we want to add frame false. And now when we restart our application, this part should be gone. So let's see npm run dev hey we don't have a bar okay so the problem is now we cannot move our application anywhere so it's stuck i can't move it so how about we create our own custom top bar now let's go back to our renderer directory and we want to create a new component and since it's gonna be a top bar let's call our component top bar so we create the file top bar dot jsx all right and now let's create a functional component before i do that i'm just going to close the application because it's very distracting okay so let's begin by creating a functional component i have an extension that allows me to create co functional components really really quickly by just typing rfc and then hitting enter if you want the same extension it's this one es7 plus react redux blah 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 snippets okay now let's go back to our top bar component let's begin by creating a div how about we make the background blue for now say blue 400 actually let's run the app again so that we can see what we're doing as we're doing it and we also want to add the top bar component to our app.jsx file let's put it here all right, so now we'll be able to see the bar component as we're making it. So let's begin by making the bar as wide as our window. So let's give it the class name 
W screen and let's give it height 5. Yay! There it is. <laughs> okay, cool. So right now the thing I want more than anything is to be able to drag the window by this top bar. And I think we can achieve this by using WebKit drag region or something. Let's double check. Yes, I think it's this one, WebKit app region. Hopefully it will work for us, unlike this person on GitHub. Okay, so I'm just going to add some styling like this. Okay, so WebKit app region and then drag. All right, I really, 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 really hope it works. Wait, it is actually working. <laughs> Okay, now it would be super cool if we had a minimize and a close button. First thing we can do is create a new div and let's give it the ID control buttons, right? And within it, we will be creating two buttons. Before we do anything else, let's find close icon HTML code. So let's get this code. It's going to be our close icon. I think it looks good, All right? And now let's get a minimize icon, All right? Let's get the HTML entity. Okay. And let's give them ID so we don't get confused. So the first one is minimize and the second one is close. Now let's put them in the correct position. So um, let's go to our control buttons div and let's add some styling with the help of tailwind so i'm going to give this div position absolute and i want it to be high up so i'll make top zero and then i want it to be on the right side so I'll also make right zero super cool all right i think we should style our buttons some more but before we style them and make our top bar look nicer, let's try to see if we can get them to work first. All right, so let's create two functions, one to handle close and the other to handle minimize. And let's add on click to our minimize button. And on click, we wanna trigger the handle minimize function. And for the close, on click, we want to trigger the handle close function. So when someone clicks on the close button, our window is going to close. For this to happen, we need to send a message to our main process and tell it to close the window. To do this, we can type window dot electron dot IPC renderer dot send and the message we want to send is close window and for handle minimize we want to do the same thing so i'll just just copy this line and paste it here and instead of close window i'll make it minimize window and now let's go to our main process and we want to add a line of code that's gonna be very similar to this one. By the way, this line of code was added by Vite by the template we've used. It's an example on how to use the IPC. I'm just gonna comment it out. And actually the other side of this is in the app.jsx file and we should also comment it out or delete it because we won't be needing it. Now let's listen on our close window message and our minimize window message. So IPC main on close window and on close window, we want some things to happen to lead to the closing of the window. Okay, so first let's define a variable and call it current window and it will be browser window dot get focused window and we want to double check that there is actually a current window so if current window then we want to close that current window <laughs> so current window dot close our minimize function is gonna be very similar to this one so i'm just gonna copy it and paste it but instead of close window let's write minimize window and over here 
instead of current window dot close, we'll make it current window dot minimize. And now let's restart our application to see if it works. <laughs> Oh, and here's our window. Let's try to minimize. Oh, it minimized. <laughs> nice. Okay, now let's try to close. It's very hard to click on the close button. And that's because of the app region drag CSS thing we've added. A lot of the time, WebKit app region can really confuse mouse events. One of the solutions we could apply is we could just create another div that will visually blend with this one, but it will not have the web app region drag property. And we could lower our elements a bit and perhaps also add some padding like so. I think this should do it. Okay, other than that, let's try to prettify this whole situation right here. How about we make our top bar rounded? So let's add rounded T, X, L. Yeah, I think it looks much nicer. Okay, and now for our close and minimize buttons, how about we change their color, and make them white or whitish? about we try text stone 200 maybe. Yeah, I kind of like this color. And for the buttons, how about we add some padding? So let's say padding one for the minimize button and also padding one for the close button. All right, so now I think it would be a good time to actually make our window transparent. In order to do this, we can go back to our main process and let's add transparent true and also how about we change the size of our window and make it smaller so how about we make the width 350 and the height 200 and now when we restart the app we should have a smaller window uh, that's transparent hopefully oh there it is it is transparent you can hardly see the hello world all right super cool and now let's add some additional functionalities to our application. And also let's clean up a bit. I see some files that we are not gonna need that we haven't deleted yet. So let's delete them. Now there is an error because they're, they're imported. So let's go to our app.jsx and delete the import statements. All right, very cool. And also let's delete this line because we won't be needing it. Okay, now one of the functionalities we know that we want our application to have is to be able to go into overlay mode. When it's on overlay mode, uh, the top bar will be gone and the other functionalities other than the timer would also all disappear and we'll be able to click through the app. So let's import use state from react and let's initialize the variable is overlay with use state and set the initial value to false. Of course, later on, we're going to add more logic to make the overlay functionality work. For now, I wanna have it here because we'll be passing it on as a prop to the components we will be creating. So let's go to our components directory and we'll be creating our timer and input components. Before we do, let's delete the versions.jsx files because we won't be needing it. Now let's create our timer component. We'll call the file timer.jsx and we will be passing in whether it's overlay or not. So let's add is overlay here like so. Okay, and since our users would want to set the amount of time they want the timer to count down from, we're going to need to create input fields. So let's create an input field component. Let's call the file input field.jsx and let's create the function with RFC like so. Okay, so we're going to be creating three input fields and we will be rendering them in our timer component. 
So how about we import input field right now and we render them that way when we add our timer component to our app.jsx we'll be able to see what we're doing as we're doing it. So we're gonna need three input fields, one for minutes, one for seconds and one for hours. And we're going to need to pass in the label as a prop, right? So let's create some props here, label. And also we're gonna need to pass in the value as a prop. And since we're going to have our input field rendered in another component, then we're going to also pass in on change as a prop as well. And maybe we would want to add a placeholder. So we could also pass that as a prop. Okay. Now, since I'm a very big fan of seeing what I'm doing as I'm doing it, I'm going to add the timer component to my app so I can see it while I'm working on it. I'm going to remove the hello world and replace it with our timer. Let's begin by creating the input field. Let's add a label here. And since the label will be passed as a prop, then we can add it like so. All right, now let's go to our timer component and let's see what happens if we make the label, let's say minutes in this one. All right, so we see minutes. Okay, cool. All right, now let's create our input element. Our input element will be of the type number. And like we've said, we'll be passing in value as a prop. In order to be able to have something different happening on change, let's also add on change as a prop. And let's also add a placeholder that can be passed just in case we decide to add a placeholder. All right, now let's turn to our timer function. Our timer function is going to be probably the biggest component in our entire application. And it's going to have two modes. Uh, one is editing mode and the other is the timer mode. So using use state is editing, set is editing and we'll initialize the value to false. So of course, in order to be able to use use state, we have to import it first. So let's import it. All right. And now let's add conditional rendering to our HTML and JSX. Let's create a new div to wrap everything within our component for now. All right. And within it, let's add a conditional statement. So we want to check if it's editing. And if it is editing, if editing is set to true, we want to show the input fields. However, if it's not editing, we want to show something else. So let's create a div for now that we will fill in later with our timer components. So over here, we have our time setup or editing components. And over here, we are going to render our timer related components. All right. So obviously we're going to be using the input fields to set up our minutes, seconds, and hours. Perhaps it would make more sense if we make the first input element to be the hours element. And maybe let's make the second one our minutes element and our third one our seconds element. All right, and now let's declare our minutes and seconds and hours as state variables with the use state hook. So let's begin with minutes and set minutes. And let's initialize our minutes to, let's say one minute. Let's make the default of the timer one minute. Now let's initialize seconds, set seconds. And we want to initialize the seconds to zero. And then our hours, so hours, set hours. 
and we want to initialize the hours to zero as well. And now let's go to our input fields. So we said that the first one is hours. So let's add value and let's set it to hours. And for our minutes, we're going to set the value to minutes. Oh, I misspelled minutes here. <laughs> okay, now for our seconds, we'll do the same thing. Let's set the value to seconds. So right now we can't see what we're doing because we've set is editing to false and we set to only show this part if is editing is set to true. So let's make it true to see what we're working on for now. And later on, we're going to make it false again. Right, so this is how our input fields look like for now. Let's try to change the value. Uh oh, we can't because we haven't added a functionality to change them. So let's start with hours. On change, let's create a function that takes the event object as a parameter. We're gonna be retrieving the current value of the input element. So on change, we want to set hours to the value of whatever is inputted. So e.target.value. And actually, since we're going to be performing mathematical operations later in order to create the countdown functionality, then we should turn our target value into an integer. Okay, let's see if we can now change the value of the hours and yay, we can. Isn't that cool? All right, let's do the same thing with our other input fields. So for the minutes, we want to do the same thing, but instead of set hours, we want to set minutes. And likewise for the seconds. Okay, now let's try to change the value of minutes and it works and the value of seconds and it also works. All right, so I'm not a huge fan of how any of this looks. I'm thinking that the first thing I want to do is change the font. How about we choose a font like Courier or something. So let's go to our main.css file and let's change the font. So HTML font family, let's make it Courier. All right, cool. Now let's go back to our input field component. And how about we make the size of the text bigger? Let's say three extra large. And then let's see what would happen if we make the input field smaller. So let's add class name here. And let's give the input field width of 20. Okay, now how about we make the background transparent? And what if we make the text color something visible, like let's say blue, for example. Okay, and right now it's very hard to see the labels. So let's also change their color. Let's maybe give them a whitish color, perhaps. So let's say text stone 300, for example. Yay, that looks better, I think. And now I think it would look much better if we were to center our elements. So let's go to our timer component and let's add a parent div around our input elements. And let's give it the class name flex and justify center. Okay, cool. This looks better. And now let's create a button that users can click when they are happy with the choice they've made. Let's have the button have a tick symbol. Okay, let's add some styling. Let's first give our button a background. Like let's say, for example, blue and Let's make the tick itself have a grayish whitish color. Let's say text stone 200, right? I think this looks okay. And now to make the button wider, let's add some padding. Let's say padding X 20, right? And how about we add padding Y just to make it wider vertically as well? Okay, cool. 
And how about we also make it a bit rounded. So let's say rounded XL like this. And maybe we could make the tick larger. Let's make um, text extra large. And let's add margin top one. And to give it a more centered look, maybe we could also add margin left. All right, I think it looks good. So let's make our button do something. So let's add on click. On click, we want to set is editing to false, right? So let's see if it works. If it works, then the input fields should disappear. So let's click it. Yay, it works, cool. <laughs> Okay, I think now would be a good time to start working on our timer part. All right, let's begin by creating an H1 element. And this H1 element will contain our timer. We want to obviously display the value of hours and the value of minutes and seconds. So let's create a string literal and let's add the hours the minutes and then the seconds okay so i can hardly see anything so before we do anything else let's change the text color let's make it green we can see the value that we have assigned to the hours the value we've assigned to the minutes and the value we've assigned to the seconds but this does not look like how a digital clock looks. In order to make our numbers look more like they appear in clocks, we can use the pad start method. But in order to use it, we're gonna need to convert the hours, minutes, and seconds to strings. So hours to string, and then we wanna add pad start. And the first parameter takes is the number we want. Okay, we want two zeros. And then the filling, the fill string. And the fill string is zero. Yay, look, it worked. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Okay, and now let's apply the same thing to our minutes and our seconds. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Okay, yay, our minutes have a zero at the start too now. All right. And so does our seconds. Very cool, awesome. Okay, now let's style our H1 element. Let's make it bigger. Let's make it much, much bigger because right now it's very, very small. So let's give it six XL. Wow, this is cool, much bigger. I like that. How about we also center this element? So let's give its parent div the class is flex and justify center. Okay, so I like how the timer looks, but I'm not a big fan of having the background completely transparent like this. So let's go to the app.jsx file and let's create a div element to wrap our timer element like so. And now let's style it. Let's give it the background color black. And now let's decrease the opacity. So background opacity. How about we make it 40, 40%. 40 yeah, I think that looks good. Let's add some padding. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay, and now let's make the bottom part rounded. So rounded B XL. Yay, that looks good. All right, now let's go back to our timer component. And earlier we set the default value of is editing to true. Let's change it to false. And now we can uh, create a button that would allow us to enter into editing mode. But we want this button to only show when our timer is not active, is not counting down. So before we start creating our editing button, let's create const is active and set is active. And let's initialize use state to false. All right, and now let's create another div element. And that's going to be where our timer
timer buttons will be. Actually, let's wrap all of this in a div as well. Let's give this div the ID timer buttons. All right, so like we've said earlier, our timer can be active or inactive. And we want to show certain buttons when our timer is active and others when it is not active. So when it is active, we want to show a pause button and a stop button. And when it is inactive, we want to show a start button and an edit button. All right. So I don't know if you can see the buttons. They're over here. So let me for now make them lighter. Let's add text stone 500 so you guys can see them too. All right. So here are our buttons. I think it would be cooler instead of having words like start and edit, we get symbols. So I've already Googled the code for a play symbol earlier. So I'll just copy that here and replace start with it. All right, and now for the edit symbol, I was thinking we could use a pencil. Yeah, exactly like this one. All right, so I'll copy the HTML entity here. And now before we style our buttons, let's make our edit button do what it's supposed to and uh, set is editing to true when it is clicked. So set is editing true. Oh, I've just noticed that I might have made a typo in set is active. Yes, the S should not be capital. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. All right, and now when we click on the pencil, we're supposed to see the editing view. Yay, it works. Awesome. All right, now let's add some styling to our buttons. So for our start button, let's try to make our text bigger. How about we try text 5XL and let's try making the text green and let's add some margin. Yeah, that's better. And also how about we center all our buttons? So. For our timer buttons, let's try to add flex and let's justify center, right? That's better. And maybe we could give the div element that holds our button um, a, a, a black background, for example. Let's decrease the background opacity. Let's make it maybe 30 percent and maybe let's make the edges rounded rounded xl all right what if we decrease the opacity some more yeah perhaps that's better all right and now since we've styled our play button or our start button how about we also make it do something so on click it should set as active to true and now let's style our other button. I'm just going to copy the classes we've given to the play button and paste it. And maybe let's make the pencil a bit smaller and let's make the color, let's say yellow. All right, and now let's start adding the logic for our timer. Okay, so we're going to be using the use effect hook for this. So the use effect hook is a hook in React that is used for running side effects. And let's initialize it. A huge part of our timer functionality will depend on the set interval method. So let's begin by initializing a mutable variable that we'll call interval ID. And now we need to check if is active because if it is, we would like to initialize our set interval or set interval function. And we're going to give it the timeout one second. All right, so if active, we'll be initializing the set interval function and our interval ID would hold the identifier of our set interval function, which will allow us to clear it like so. So else we wanna clear interval, interval ID. Okay, and now 
let's add some logic to our set interval function. So first we want to check if seconds is greater than zero. If seconds is greater than zero, then we wanna take away one from the second. So set seconds, seconds, and then seconds minus one. Else, if seconds is not greater than zero, and minutes and hours are both zero. If they are, then we'll be playing our audio here. We're gonna add the audio in a bit. Other than playing the audio, we want to clear the interval and we want to set is active to false. And now let's add another else statement. This time we want to check if the value of minutes is zero, then we want to decrement from hours. So hours, hours minus one. And we want to set minutes to 59, right? Else we want to decrement from minutes. So minutes and that's minus one. All right, and in either case, we want to set seconds to 59. And finally, in order to prevent any memory management or performance issues, let's add a return statement that clears interval. So that way, if any of the dependencies change or when our component unmounts, we would have the cleanup function to clean up our interval. And now let's try our timer. I hope it works this time. Okay, let's hit play. All right, looks like it is working. Right now, if we click on the pause or the stop buttons, nothing will happen because we haven't added any functionalities to them. So let's tend to that. All right, so for the pause button, we wanna add on click and on click, we want to set is active to false. So let's try. Yay, and it pauses, it stops working. <laughs> right, and for the stop button, we want the same thing to happen, but we also want to set hours to zero and minutes to zero as well, and seconds to zero. All right, so let's try it, let's play. And click on stop, yay, awesome. All right, and now how about we add a stop symbol instead of this stop word. I'm gonna copy the HTML entity for it and I will just paste it here. Okay, there it is. Okay, and for the pause button, how about we add vertical pipes like so? Let's try it. Okay, I think maybe that would work. Okay, let's style our buttons. So I'm going to copy the styling we've added to our play button and I'm gonna just paste it like so. All right, and maybe I'll change the color. Like how about we make the color of pause button yellow and let's copy this and paste it for our stop button. And instead of yellow, let's try red, okay? I think it looks cool. All right, and now how about we play around a bit with our edit timer to see if it works as it should. So we can use the buttons or we can input with our keyboards. So let's try to set it to one hour and the minutes, oh, we're not supposed to be able to add negative minutes. So how about we try to fix this? So let's go to our input field and let's create a function and let's call it handle input change and it will take e for event as a param and then we want to get a hold of our inputted value so let's create variable input value and let's set it to e.target.value all right, and then we want to check if the input value is a non-negative number. And to do this, I think we can use our regex 
expression to check if everything in our string is a digit. All right, um, I think that would be the correct expression. So I'm just going to copy it. And then I want to start an if conditional paste to my regex expression and I'll type dot test input value. Okay, so basically what this does is it checks if the contents of our string are all digits, so no symbols or anything like that. And if they're all digits, then we want to trigger on change. And now let's go to on change here and let's add handle input change. All right, and I think this should do it. Now, now let's try again. Now we can't choose a negative number anymore. Let's try with the hours. Nope. Let's try with the seconds. Nope. Awesome. Looks like we've done it. All right. So how about we now try to get our audio to work? So when our timer finishes, we want to hear an alarm to tell us that it finished, right? All right. So how about we find an applause sound or something? and download it because, you know, applause makes me feel happy. Um, let's try here. Yeah, I think this sounds nice. Okay, I'm just gonna download it. All right, and I'm gonna rename it alarm sound. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my assets folder and I'm gonna create a new folder and I'll call it sounds and I will drag my alarm sound into it. And now in my timer element, I want to import that sound so I can use it. So let's import alarm from assets slash sounds slash alarm sound dot mp3. All right, and now in order to be able to use our audio, uh, let's create variable audio and let's use the constructor new audio to create an object that we can use. All right, and now where we've marked where we're gonna be putting our audio earlier, let's just add the line audio.play. And now, our audio should work and I'm so excited and nervous. Let's try it. So let's set uh, minutes to zero and let's set seconds to three and let's play it. So three, two, one. Yay, it's working. I'm so happy. <laughs> this is cool. Okay. So of course we can improve so many things like you can add on hover effects and stuff like that. But what I'm thinking we should do right now is get our overlay mode to work when we hit some hotkeys. So let's go back to our main process. And, and the first thing we wanna do is we want to define a variable that will hold our hotkey. So let's call it toggle overlay hot key and it's better to set it to a hot key that we are we don't already use a lot so i'm going to choose something like control and six and then we want to define a variable so we can track whether overlay mode is on or off so let's call it is overlay on and let's initialize it to false. All right, and now let's register our shortcut. To do this, we can use global shortcut dot register. And then we wanna pass in our hotkey. So toggle overlay hotkey. And when that hotkey is pressed, we want to toggle the is overlay on. So is overlay on b exclamation mark is overlay on all right and now ignore mouse events so set ignore mouse events 
and we will pass in is overlay on. Okay, and next we want to send a message to our renderer process. So we can hide the elements we want to hide when it overlay mode is on. So main window dot web contents dot send and we want to send overlay mode and is overlay on. All right, and next let's console log so we can trace what's going on. All right, and now let's open our app.jsx to the side and we want to import use effect and now let's initialize our use effect hook and we want to create an empty dependency array and we want to listen on our overlay mode message so let's add window.electron.ipcrenderer.on and we're listening on overlay mode so on overlay dash mode we want to toggle our is overlay state so set is overlay prev state exclamation mark prev state all right and now to make sure that we won't get any memory leaks or undesired behavior let's return a cleanup function we want to return window dot electron dot ipc renderer dot remove all listeners overlay mode all right and now let's restart our app to see if our overlay mode works all right so i'm gonna put it over here and now i'm gonna press ctrl 6 and if it works we can click through it yay it works and the buttons currently don't work you can't do anything with the app but you can click through it so i'm gonna see if i can erase this text and i can right i'm gonna hit undo super cool right all right now let's control six again so we can move our app and when we are on overlay mode we would like to only see the timer element and we don't want to see the buttons or the top bar all right so how about we wrap our top bar in a div and add some conditional styling to it if is overlay mode is set to false then we want this div to be visible otherwise we want this div to be invisible right so when i hit control six okay something is not right you know what let me restart the app again so npm run dev all right so now the top bar is showing now i'm gonna hit control six yay it's hidden and i'm gonna hit it again it shows i'm gonna hit it again it's hidden yay cool all right so i'm not a big fan of how this div looks when the top bar is not showing so i'm gonna add conditional styling to it as well so when is overlay is false let's show the class is the same however when it is on we want to change um rounded bxl and just have it be rounded xl yes like this exactly all right and now the thing that we still need to do is we still need to hide our button elements when is overlay mode is on okay you guys remember we have already given timer the prop is overlay so let's pass in is overlay to our timer element like so and now let's find the div that holds our button here it is and just like we've done over here we want to give it some conditional styling so when is overlay is false we want our buttons to have those classes like they've had already however when is overlay is true we want our button div to be hidden okay now let's restart our application npm run dev okay i honestly really 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 hope it works okay so let's click Control six <laughs> yay it worked finally okay cool all right and now let's try our timer so i'm just gonna play it and then hit Control six 
and here it is we have our timer running but we can click through it and act like it is not there <laughs> All right, I am super happy about this and let's build our application. However, before we do this, how about we add some styling to our buttons to get them to scale up on hover. So let's go to our main.css and let's select all our button elements. And on hover, we want to scale by let's say 10%, so let's make it scale 1.1, right? Yay, it works, super cool. All right, and now we can start building our app and creating a distributable. Um, actually, since we've used Electron Vite, creating an installer for Windows or Linux or Mac OS is, is actually going to be super easy. I'm going to show you in a second, but first let's go and find an icon that will be well suited for our app. I'm using Windows and for Windows, I will need a .ico image. So I'm gonna look for clock ICO and download one that I like. All right, how about this orange one? All right, so I'm gonna download it as ICO and now I will change its name to icon. All right, and then let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's go to the build directory and let's delete these icons and let's replace them with the icons we want. Right, so because I'm using Windows, I'm gonna just import icon.ico. But if you are using Linux or Mac OS, or you wanna create an installer for Linux or Mac OS, you're gonna need other formats. Now, let's go back to the Electron Vite docs. And we already have an Electron Builder already created for us. And I think it has everything we need ready set up for us. Um, now let's go to our package.json and see if we need to add scripts to it. So here for Windows, we should have the script set for us. So hmm, yes, there it is. It is there. So let's, let's try running npm run build win. I hope this works. Okay, let's hit enter. All right, a dist directory was created for us. All right, it might take a while, it's building. And Avast is telling us it looks safe. Okay, so looks like it's done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reveal in File Explorer. And yay, here's our setup file. <laughs> Let's double click it. Avast is always suspicious, so don't worry about it. All right, now it's installing, yay. And yay, our timer app worked. <laughs> cool, this is very, very cool. Here it is. Okay, now let's close it and let's open it again. And here it is, here's our timer app. Okay, um, let's set minutes to zero and let's say seconds to three. See what happens. Yay! <laughs> we did it! Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, suggestions, anything at all, please type that down in the comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Have a lovely day and see you next time. Bye!